Welcome again to another episode of Equip and Elevate. I am so excited. Today I have Nom Pendulo on my podcast. I happen to know her from high school. We used to serve on the same committee. Right. And all of you guys know her from Fees Must Fall. And now she is the youngest um, women on benches of the ANC. So that's quite exciting to get to unpack her journey in student activism, her journey in politics, and most importantly, what I really want to touch on is obviously her journey in education and seeing some of the changes or things she wants to see in education. So welcome Thank to you. my podcast. Thank you so much. Um, I think this is so cool because like, I remember when you know, 20, was it 2017 or 16 with Fees Must Fall? 2015, 2016. 2015. Yeah. And I think for a lot of us, it was the first time where we were part of something that was bigger for the younger mm. generation and having to be involved in something like that. And Lyra was saying this, I'm like, no, man, I know that girl. Mm. I'm like, guys, that's no P, you mm. know? And I'm um, just seeing your, your progression from that and you actually being consistent in your fight for education and mm. your con- you've been consistent in really trying to make sure that you put in measures or trying to implement things. I mean, I see you on weekends, you'll be visiting schools or mm. during weekdays, you're visiting schools. And that's obviously part of your portfolio. But I think it's just been good and great to see your consistency and sure. really making sure that we have more access to education, we improve our education system, and that it was it's something that more than anything I would say falls part of your vision, but I mean, we'll get into that. That's just me on the outside. Sure. But I think to get started, I really want to just go back to your childhood. Tell us about your childhood. What were the key values that have shaped you to the person, person that you are today or the pers- person that you are becoming? Sure. Well, firstly, let me greet all your listeners. Uh, good greetings, because I don't know, when the time they're listening to this, I don't know if it will be evening or day or morning so greetings um to all your listeners and i really hope that you know well firstly let me wish you good luck with your journey with your podcast thank and, you so much <laughs> but also to see the really great young woman you've you've grown into i mean you know i haven't gone to high school with you i think you are a year younger than me what badge is that that's like red badges blue blue badges what badge were you black black badges oh, we, yeah. we were the cool badges no i feel like blue was cool black what? was just like black badges <laughs> we were like, the ones <laughs> so guys we used to have badges according to years sure and there were five i think five colors yes and you would inherit the next color from the outgoing matrix, matrix. yeah and we had the cool one, which was the blue one. <laughs> and then they had the black one. We uh, had the black badges. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you being a, a blue badge, you know, um, and us serving on the Student Christian Association together. Mm. Um, and you really being, you know, everybody's, everybody stands out, right? But you really stood out wow. amongst your generation. And just seeing you grow into this amazing young woman you become um, has really been pleasant to watch from a distance because oh. of course we're watching from social media right? Oh, wow. so we think that we know what's happening over here post about us but just to watch what you give us sure. um, has been really beautiful to watch you know and and so going back I guess to the question which says um, well also I think I must highlight so it's one of the reasons why I could not fail you <laughs> it was like it was like a, an obligation you know when you feel like you must show up yeah. For someone, you oh, must wow. show up for family. You must show up. Yeah, so think... going back to your roots and saying, but the school is and I must be there to support her in the work that she's doing. I think that was very important for sure. me. Sure, thank you so much. I mean, I think when I reached out to you, I'm like, I'm just going to be reaching what? out, and I was so humbled <laughs> when you say yes. I'm like, oh my goodness. What? I think every time when I told people who I was interviewing, it's almost like. I don't know, it was like this distant but close thing. Mm. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm so like humble that you said yes to this. Because mm. I know you're very busy and sure. I'm like, I see you on weekends, there you are in schools. And I'm like, during the weekdays, you're there in and out of schools. I'm like, oh, yo, 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 she's going to say to me, I can't come. Sure. And I'm like, I was so ready for that. And I understood because I understand how busy you are. But I just really felt that having known you from, obviously, I think when you're leading with people from a spiritual perspective, mm. I felt that there was just so much that people can learn and mm. hear from your journey. And there's so many young women and young girls wanting to get into politics, mm. maybe wanting to, and you know, move into the space you're in. And, you know, there's so much that you can impart because sure. it's so inaccessible, sure. you normally. Yeah. And I, having to, it was so important for me to highlight that you're the youngest 
women also in that sense because most of the time you see older people in politics mm-hmm. and it's because of people do want to get into politics but it's hard you mm. know you have to even when you're inside even when you're inside so yeah. it's like so i thought it was like you know i highlighting something like that's so important especially for young girls watching this and saying how did that that's why sure. career was important how did you get into that how sure. the progression what do you want to see change so i'm really excited about that conversation so we're starting with the roots right we're, yeah let's yeah. go back so to the roots so back to basics yes. um back to basics um my value systems and me growing up as a child so i come from a family that is very that showed me how to give showed me how to be thoughtful of the next person i think of my my grandparents um uh you know like i mean my grandmother sometimes she'd say she's starting a business and then we always question the profit like are you really trying to make money <laughs> What's here What's a business model <laughs> you, you know but yeah. like you can just talk with your mother hello i boy humanitarianism jelena she just wants to give 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 and give yeah. right um and so and just being thoughtful of of the next person also just wanting to serve right how can mm. i help mm. so I, i i've seen my grandmother my mother my grandfather um and 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 i guess those that that sort of family unit always acting in a manner that for me display people who just want to serve so mm. from a very early childhood um i was that kid also that kid who took initiative um one thing that used to make me very uncomfortable that irked me as a kid and still does now is when you asked a basic question like um oh we need someone to volunteer to do xyz and then the class goes crits you know yeah, and, and everyone's like, like looking around everyone's looking up and down you have to be the one that puts up your hand and then i'm just like guys like it needs to get done yeah. you know so let's just do it like and it's not because you're an eager beaver it's just like as it it needs to get done so let's just do it like finish and clear um so and even now um every time i go to schools and i'll ask you know the learners in a in a class or in the hall would say who knows what parliament is yeah. and everyone keeps quiet Oh, it's just like guys can't can't operate like this because we we need people or citizens who are who are initiators and who are go getters and who just grab opportunities mm-hmm. i mean we we come from a history where at some point we we didn't have these opportunities mm-hmm. so if someone says to you nancy opportunity it's mm-hmm. um and and then don't only look forward look behind you and say um who else could i take with and on this journey yes. right so those are value systems that i guess i learned from my parents and they took me and my grandparents and they took me you know through my journey i guess of leadership which for me was serving mm. so you become a leader not because where well, you know you think you hold a hegemony over the views of society but you become a leader because you're saying i'm willing to serve you mm. right so that's that's what it was high school to just like okay some people must help clean whatever okay we'll go do it yeah um and that's just basically i guess how you one got into that space of and i really want to put this in inverted commas leading because yeah. for me it was just giving yeah and anything. i think also it, it's so important we always think that our childhoods are in isolation to our journeys oh, and no. the fact that your grandmother was serving and sure. that for her was business you sure. know and then in essence what you do right now you're serving you're yeah. serving the country and it's i think people forget that in order for you to be in that kind of position a huge part of it is service sure you know so i think it's always good to even when when we go back how so much influence our families have and yeah. the value system they create for us the value system just seeing the hustle i sure. mean for me seeing my dad growing up i feel i used to and my mom and be like wow you know for me even being at the school you went to mm. a lot of the kids there it was easy to be in that school for mm. me my parents would work so hard mm-hmm. to pay yeah. the fees they would work so hard to make sure that I was in boarding school and yeah. all of that not because they had glamorous jobs sure they had no more jobs hard. they worked hard and had to hustle and like have set side hustle yeah. and and i think now when i look back i'm like wow i'm always side hustling <laughs> it's like for me it's like the question that will always come up with see i will love about zin um around like you know uh the struggles of people who can't afford university fees this one went to girls high I'm like I was going to challenge you I wasn't on a scholarship I guess I Yeah. Like you, you don't even know the anything school. around yeah. you know uh, um so yeah like when you spoke about the schools we went to 
I remain very grateful to the sacrifices my mom had to make to take me to those schools. As in Sugendli, next day, Nina, Ma is looking at that petrol tank like, I don't even know where I'm going to begin trying to make sure that this yeah. tank can get my child to school. Yeah. Not good to eat while, just good to eat biggest goal. Mm. Um, so, yeah, those sacrifices our parents made, um, yeah, they really shape us and mold us to be the beings that we are. Yeah, yeah. sure. And I mean, take me through university now. So I think that also speaks back to, before we even get there, what is, what is, I think this is an exciting question. What was something you wanted to do growing up or what, what did you want to be? So when I was in primary, uh, Watercliff Primary, um, I wanted to dance and sing and act and like, you know, all that, those yeah. things. You yeah. know, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Going to auditions. Can yeah. I tell you, I also went, once went to a dancing audition. I can't dance. You, but you were like... But I was there. <laughs> I was like, I can be one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think primary school, that was, that was it. Um, yeah, I remember a poster I wanted even, you know, and I remember my mom saying to me, hmm, no, like, <laughs> no, like she just said, no, like, you know, that it's very tough in that industry, you know, that's one thing I remember her saying to me, um, I think it was grade four or five, we had a project on, you know, what do you want to be, whatever, mm. yeah, and I had these poster, these pictures of actors and dancers and stuff. Then I got to high school, and in high school, I think about grade nine or ten, that's when I said I want to be the president of South Africa in the year 20, I think wow. I had placed 2045 at that time. And someone said to me, you were, you were not a very ambitious young person, 2045, you know. But then sure. when I thought about it, I was like, no, it's because... Yeah. <laughs> so I will be president when, you and know. I'm doing the calculation in my head. I was like, okay, I'm going to be president when I'm this age. At this age, I'll also be president. But now when I'm, you know, at this age, at, you know, 28, I'm like, I bought 2045. was actually very far. <laughs> but that's, I guess, one of the challenges we have in our country where, um, you know, many young people feel as though those who are leading us at, uh, at a national level um, uh, are very touch. aged or ma very matured, rather. Let's rather say very matured, mm -hmm. um, because particularly because of the population that yeah. we have, which is, yeah. you know, vastly um, young people. But so that was, yeah. So it, it was in high school where I think, and, and that's where my mom also said, you know, you don't have to be a politician. You don't have to study. Because the question was, what do you want to study? I think this was grade 10, 11. What do you want to study in varsity? And I said, politics. Then my mom said to me, but you know, you don't have to study politics to be to a politician. Be politi yeah. That's um, the same chat my dad had. But yeah. somehow I still went to head and he I, I was just like, you'll meet me on the other side. <laughs> and I put law for his ease. Alela, my mom was so, like, I think in end of matric, that December, um, there were still issues on it around like ironing out Gucci, what's what I'm studying the following year. Mm. I bettered it even and I said, okay, maybe a become PPE. You know, at least as economics I there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> she was really upset with me. So sure. eventually I did a Bachelor of Science in Geography. Wow. Um, I gave her the science. But when you look at the modules I took, they were all like in the humanities. Because I took a geography. I took psychology, I took archaeology and economics. Then I failed economics in first in the first semester. And I said, Jalil, I told you I'm not about this life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I took international relations under special concession. And I think a lot of people don't know how how much you can play around with your curriculums by going and doing something like a special concession mm. where you go to the faculty that you're in and you plead mm. for them to allow you to do at least one or two modules that are outside of your faculty in order for you to get the experience that you want from that particular module, right? So, and I was the happiest person after that. So in my second semester going down, I really enjoyed my experience in varsity because I enjoyed all the subjects I was doing, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, that was, that, was, that was about it. So it's, I mean, it's crazy how you've always wanted to be like, basically a person that will be essentially leading um serving, as, serving um, yeah. as a president and having to look at now you're in a position where you are serving and sure. you're building towards that and guys we are waiting for you to be the president <laughs> uh, something i <laughs> How would, often I do would you get that? so if someone were to ask me again today and i'm glad you do you want to be president of south africa i would say no <laughs> no thank you near um 
it took first year of varsity for me to properly understand a lot of things about politics. Mm. Um, whatever whimsical ideas I had in, in high school literally went out the window in my first year because I realized, I realized how real a world it was, how the gravitude of, or the gravity of the work that is done in that particular space. Because literally, um, I get to Wits 2012, Feb, and I decide I am going to join the ANC Youth League. And I look for the ANC Youth League gazebo during orientation week, and I sign up. When I get to the uh, sign-up station, um, they ask me if I also want to sign up for Sasko. And I'm like, Sasko? As in the Sasko of Bunny Pichai? The Sasko of Steve Biko? I'm <laughs> That's like, what I it really about. exists? Yeah. yeah. You also have, I, I, thought it, I thought it was like a historic, I thought it like died of Biko. Yeah. I didn't know it was a real thing yeah. even now, right? Yeah. So I was really excited because I had a historical context of what Sasko was, um, you know, as founded by, you know, uh, um, Steve Biko and that collective. But I didn't know it still existed and it plays such a fundamental role in various institutions of higher learning across the country. So I signed up for that too. Didn't sign up for the YCL. Um, I wasn't sure if I'm a communist or a socialist yeah. or a white. <laughs> but so I was just like, wait, that like sounds really deep. Marx and Lenin, hold on. Um, but so I signed up for the ANC Youth League. I signed up for SASCO. I volunteered in the SRC from first year, from the get-go. Sure. And that was my life. Like, yeah. I'm sure if you even speak to Yoli, she will tell you that, oh, yeah, like, SRC. girl was down for that <laughs> stuff from day one. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, then I, I led the, I think my first leadership structure was Housecom. And that was the craziest thing because that was my second year. And it was my first year in that race. And if you know, many races don't allow you. So they had by-elections because they, they, the previous in the previous year when they had elections for the new house come, they didn't fill two seats, right? So me and I feel that first year, is anyone keen on when it's going to vacancies? Yeah. You know, well, you can... Lalela, within a week of being in that race, I was already on the house come, which is not common, right? But I was like, guys, if no one wants to um, avail themselves to serve these students, I will do it. Yeah. <laughs> I so volunteer myself. I volunteer myself. And we went, th oh, then someone then said, uh, you know, someone who had already stayed in the race and was actually eligible to, to was actually eligible to run, then ran, and she didn't make it. Sure. And that was, we was like, what's going on here? But, you know, yeah, so that was my first, I think, proper elected leadership role. Then it was Sasko, where I was deputy secretary of the branch, um, and those who don't know what SASCO is, it's the South African Students Congress. It's not Isinkwa. Yeah. <laughs> the South African Students Congress. And it, it's, an, it's an organization that serves to, that seeks to serve students mm -hmm. in institutions of higher learning. Mm -hmm. So join SASCO, well, uh, led SASCO as the deputy secretary in 2013, 2014, 2015. I was the chairperson of SASCO. 2014, 2015. Or it was a 2015, 2016, I was the deputy chairperson of the ANC Youth League on campus. Um, and yeah, I just found myself in various spaces of just, you know, being, being, a, being a student activist. Mm. You know, you do what you have to do. From my first year, even though I wasn't leading any position because I was in first year, of course, you, you serve through the, the, the subcom of um, an SRC portfolio. So in that, in that first year, I was in the subcom of the Secretary General of the SRC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where I would then, you know, volunteer myself and many other activities with the, I think they call it the Student Development and Leadership Unit. So they were like student practitioners, right? So they used to do lots of things on campus, serve my, served and, you know, and that was my life. That's just what it is. Right, so I think just listening to your journey, sure. um, and a lot of people um, always say that, for instance, with your career, you have a strategic plan. You know, you know that... <laughs> I wanna, uh, I wanna study law. When I during my law years, when I'm studying law, I am applying for VAC work so that I can potentially get articles. When I get them, strategic that I wanna become a trademark attorney. So I'm gonna rotate there. So there's always like a strategic. You you plan strategically. I don't and, think I have one. And then I'm, you don't have one because I'm it's thinking a spiritual plan. Really? Because I'm thinking <laughs> everything you've said. Like yeah. from first year, it's like you knew that that was your 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 end goal. Like you knew that you're walking into what yeah. was going to be sort of your 
your journey, you know? I guess it's like how the strategic plan gets interrupted, perhaps, then. Mm. So it's like a vision. Maybe let's call it a vision. So it's like, I'm going to do politics. So, okay, remember, there's nothing to do with a high school kid. I'm going to go to Verts. I'm going to study. Pol- Actually, at that time, I think I wanted to go to Rhodes or Forte. That's how deep I was in the beaconess. <laughs> I was like Forte, <laughs> like at that time, imagine. But then I ended up going to Verts. Yeah. Um, so it was, okay, I'll go to varsity. I'll study politics. I'll, you know, get to, go, get to campus. I'll be in the youth league or the Sasko or whatever, whatever. But remember, I, I, I didn't even have an experience of COSAS. COSAS is the Congress of South African Students, mm. where you, it's, a, it's, it's basically an organization that seeks to represent learners, right? So that's people in like high school below. So I'm, I, I have this idea, mm. but I didn't get to it and I experienced hippolytique and I'm like, oh no, girl. <laughs> Whatever you were thinking is not it, right? Um, but also, because you're now in it, you have such, you, you don't plan it anymore. Mm. Because it's so, it's so, it's so personal. Mm. You, you, f- you literally feel an internal frustration when um, your fellow peers um, are crying about a particular matter, mm. right? So we don't have, for example, funding or we don't have uh, particular resources to study or um, we're violated as women in the space or whatever it may be. So it's personal. So you, you can't be clinical about it, right? So you, you also get to a point where you understand, as per the teachings of the organizations that you're part of, that you must... So you wait your turn right? Allow yourself to be identified by the society that you lead to be a person that must lead them. Mm. Don't force yourself upon people. So don't, so the strategic plan doesn't work because it just doesn't, I don't know, like it just doesn't work. Mm. Like, I mean, I think when I think about it, my peers who I joined student politics with, they ran for SRC elections a year before I thought we were ready. And in the year of which I thought we were ready, I didn't run. So, so I didn't run the year. So my peers, would, my peers said, I, you know, when I avail ourselves, I think it was second year. And I said, guys, we're very young. Let's run in third year. Mm. And then I didn't run in third year. I ran in my fourth year at Wits. Um, because in my third year, I don't know why I didn't run, but I just felt like, I, I don't know, just, you know. Because remember, in my second year, I thought it was too early. Yeah. My third year comes. I don't run. Um, and then I eventually ran in my fourth year when I had left, when I felt I was at a point of an exit. Um, it was, I was, I was, I was finished. Remember I told you that I failed equals. Mm. So I started my IR in the second semester, which means whenever I was going to finish my degree would have been six months later because I started IR six months, mm. you know. So I, I come back to this to finish this IR and then I decide to just redo other modules because I'm like, I, well, may, might as well just better these ones since I'm here. Um, and literally, as I'm doing that, these ones now, like, I'm, like a, I'm already feeling like a fossil on campus. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, mm, president. Actually, well, at that time, I was chair of Sasko. They're like, chair, don't you... Actually, I was an outgone chair. But you know, once a chairperson, they always call you a chairperson. Yeah, yeah. Once a president, you're, you're always, always a president, president right? Yeah. So I was, I was, I was out gone. I was working already um, as a as a junior researcher or a student researcher um, for the research unit, the Ruth First Research Unit of the ANC in Gauteng. Mm. So I've never worked for Lutuli House, which is part of what the media, you know, like she works for the for Lutuli House, but she's protesting to Lutuli House. I'm like, I don't work for Lutuli House, like yeah. <laughs> never have. But uh, and um. So I worked for, for ANC Gauteng okay. in the research unit where we basically um, monitored and evaluated the progress of municipalities in Gauteng. And that's when these ones then say, no, come back, you know. So I was on my exit plan. So I don't know if, it, I don't know if, if that's part of the strategic plan. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was Would you say that, I mean, this is then going back to how do you define your purpose and calling? Would you say that maybe... It's greater. Okay. Yeah. It's greater than what we think. Yeah.